lions have always been famously associated with ferocity, violence, and sheer raw power. They are a symbol of the brutality that is inherent to life in the wild. However, while all these things are expected of them already, in 2006, a coalition of six lions took the words like violence, brutality and dominance, and raised the bar for all future generations of lions. These six lions committed such acts of savagery and put on such a display of power that it exceeded the already high expectations of all who make a living from observing wildlife. Not even the most educated experts on lions could have ever predicted that a coalition of just six lions would one day control a territory spanning 170,000 acres. Today, we'll be covering the tale of the infamous Mapogo Lions, a coalition of six brothers originating from the Mala Mala Game Reserve in the Sabai Sands region of Kruger National Park. South Africa. These lions belong to the Sparta pride of the region. Let us introduce you to each member of the band of brothers. First, we have Makulu, the oldest of the Mapogo brothers. Makulu was the only one out of the six that was not their real brother. It is believed that the Sparta pride lost a cub of the same age and Makulu joined in and took his place. Normally, a pride would never accept such an intruder, which is why experts believe that Makulu might be the Mapogo's half-brother his father being from the Sparta pride and his mother belonging to some other pride. Because of this biological difference, Makulu was also significantly bigger than his brothers and hence became their leader. Secondly, there is Pretty Boy, named as such because he was a calculated and strategic fighter which had fewer scars on his face because of it. At number three, there is Mr. T, named as such because of the distinctive mohawk-shaped mane, reminding everyone of the iconic a team character. Fourth position belonged to Scar, whether he was named as such to evoke the memory of Simba's uncle or because of the scar on his spine is unclear, probably the latter, because he was also known as Skew Spine. At fifth place stood Rasta Aka Dreadlocks, who had something caught in his mane causing it to twirl into dreadlocks. And finally, at number six, there was Kinky Tail, who simply had a kink in his tail as an identity marker. If you ask me, coolest name in the group, least coolest reason for it. But how did their reign begin? As young lions, these six brothers were kicked out of the Sparta pride in 2006. They started out by scavenging food from lioness hunts. In lion prides, it is the females that take care of the hunting activities while males are responsible for protecting territories. However, these six males soon became experts in hunting big games such as buffaloes, rhinos and even giraffes. It was the buffalo hunting where they truly shined, more than any lion coalition before them and there was a reason for it. Buffaloes are one of the strongest creatures in Africa. They weigh roughly 937 to 1918 pounds. Not many creatures mess with them unless they're desperate for food or maybe feeling a little extra confident that day. Female lions, only weighing 270 pounds, have a hard time taking on buffalo and wouldn't go for one if they have another choice. However, this coalition was composed entirely of males weighing a decent 420 pounds. This meant when they wanted buffalo, they went out and got them some. According to predator expert Dave Salmoni, it was their knack for hunting buffalo that eventually became the pivotal reason for their success. You know how your mother tells you to eat your green vegetables if you want to be big and strong. Well, lionesses tell their children to eat the black buffalo for the same reason. The Mapogo became some of the biggest and strongest lions of the region. When hunting big game, the Mapogo always worked together. Makulu was the director of the attack, but it was Mr. T and Kinky Tail that were the stars of the show. These two showed a kind of aggression that was never before seen in lions. Mr. T was so violent that he was even willing to fight his brothers to get a bigger share. Pretty much like how you and your older brother would fight over the last slice of pizza except with a lot more blood and possibly the intent to kill. The first territorial claim of the Mapogo Lions came in 2006. The six brothers entered the northern Sabai Sands region and challenged the four lion coalition that ruled the area. Their thunderous and distinct roars can be heard within a five-mile radius, and they used the infamous lion technique of taking a piss to mark the territory as their own. As the four dominant lions of the region accepted the challenge, the Mapogo swifty managed to kill one leaving the other three no choice but to flee their little kingdom. However, their job was not done. Following the victory, the Mapogos went on a search and found 11 cubs of the Four Lion Coalition and killed every single one of them to ensure that their lineage wouldn't go on. This way, the lionesses of the rival pride no longer had any cubs suckling them and they went into Estrus, which is just a fancy way of saying they were ready to mate again and the Mapogos were ready to provide. This cycle of violence repeated several times and in little over a year. 
the Mapogos had successfully controlled eight neighboring prides and annihilated over 110 lions. This number might even be bigger. The Mapogo lions had such a big territory. It was hard to keep track. 170,000 acres is a lot of ground to cover. This was a massacre of proportions never before seen in the wild. Of course, killing the dominant lions is only the first pillar of a successful invasion. The second was to impregnate the females and to pass on their lineage. The Mapogos are known to have fathered cubs in the Sand River Pride, Ottawa Pride and the Tsalala Pride, and these are just the known ones. The two-part rampage of murder and procreation tells us it's highly likely they fathered cubs in several other prides too. Here's where things start to take a turn for the twisted though. If killing 110 lions, including males, females and cubs was not enough, the Mapogos indulged in the never-before-seen activity of eating them as well. Cannibalism, particularly of cubs, was never even heard of in the world of lions until the Mapogos came around. Mr. T was particularly famous for eating the cubs of his enemies for which he received the title of Satan. Later, when Mr. T would get into conflicts with his brothers, he would even eat their cubs. More on this in a bit. The devastation caused by the six brothers left a significant mark that will be felt in the region for years to come. The number of lions in the regions reduced significantly by the end of the reign of the Mapogos. Their reign continued for at least six years after their first conquest and it was reported that the Mapogo brothers had killed about 40% of the lion population in the reserve. Here are the stats of some of the neighboring prides before and after the Mapogos decimated them. Castleton pride before 22 lions after 6 lions. Salala pride before 10 lions after 5 lions. Simon Vanian pride before 10 lions. After 0, completely decimated. Since you've made it this far, what do you think of the story of the Mapogo lions? Have you heard of this legend before? Let us know in the comments below. However, as magnificent, and also horrific, as the reign of the Mapogo brothers was, all great things come to an end. For the Mapogos, this began when family feuds broke out between Mr. T and Makulu around 2008. Mr. T fought Makulu in a violent clash that ended when Makulu severely bit Mr. T's leg to end the confrontation. After this, Mr. T and Kinky Tail, the two most violent members of the group, went their own way to rule the northern region of Mapogo's territory. For two years, the two lions managed to keep a firm grip on their territory. That is until, in 2010, they clashed with the Majingalanes, a coalition of five young male lions who were looking for territory to claim as their own. Although their story may sound like a similar start to the Magopos, their reign is insignificant. The two Mapogos managed to isolate and kill the youngest of the Majingalanes. But later the same night, Kinky Tail came across the remaining four Majingalanes. Having been a dominant lion his whole life, Kinky Tail had no concept of fear and took on all four young and ambitious lions by himself. A terrible idea. The Majingalanes soon had him pinned to the ground along a dirt road, where they violently tore him into pieces. One bit into his neck, one tore his tail and genitalia off, and a third was biting into his spine. Wildlife researchers who witnessed the horrific scene eventually heard a gunshot-like snapping sound. The Majingalanes snapped Kinky Tail's spine, and this was his final blow. Mr. T eventually arrived to defend his brother. However, he had no chance against four lions and was chased off. What followed was another horrific spectacle. The four Majingalanes began eating Kinky Tail while he was still breathing. By the time he took his last breath, they had already digested most of his rear legs. All that remained in the morning was one of his paws and nothing else. Mr. T surrendered his territory and went back to his brothers to rejoin them. It seemed he was peacefully coexisting with them for a while, but he was named Satan for a reason. It was soon discovered that he was eating the cubs of his brothers when they were not around to stop their lineage and to mate with the females of his choice. What a prick. Rasta was believed to be killed by poachers and Scar was shot by the locals after he tried to leave the Sabai Sands Reserve. In March 2012, Mr. T fell victim to another coalition of lions known as Salatis. He was found with a deep bite wound in his back that paralyzed him from the waist down and several other injuries all over his body. Following this event there were only two Mapogos left of what was once a glorious band of brothers. The now older lions, Pretty Boy and Makulu, left their territory, forfeiting it to the Salatis. The last time they were seen together was in November 2012, doing what they did best, feeding on a buffalo perhaps reminiscing the glory days. The last sighting of a Mapogo was of Makulu, all alone, in his homeland of Mala Mala in 2013. At this point Makulu was 15 years old, 
This is almost 90 or more in human years. The terrible and horrific reign of the Mapogos was at an end but it had changed the face of the Sabai Sands and the Kruger National Park region forever. If you enjoyed our content, please like and subscribe. See you later.